All right, what's going on, guys? Sorry for the uh, – you're going to notice a weird background, and my mic is actually my laptop mic. So I've been traveling, so I've kind of been uh, – haven't uploaded, and I apologize for that. But uh, we're going to get right back in it today, and I'm going to cover two um, main tools that you need to know. Uh, for, we're kind of diving deeper into enumeration, and uh, this one's actually – one of them is going to be a password cracking tool that – uh, if you guys follow my stream, you guys have seen me pat or crack passwords with other tools. This is going to be a little bit of an easier tool, in my opinion. But we're going to go ahead and go with it. So you can see here we've got Nikto. If you've never heard of Nikto, um, it's basically a web penetration testing tool. So we're going to go ahead and go over here. I did not mean to name that. So here I've got Nikto Tac H, and you're going to see that's going to give you it's your, your like help command, right? So it's going to give you all of your options here. So this tool takes a long time. Both these tools I'm going to show you take a long time to run typically. So that's why uh, I already ran the tools for you, and I'm just going to explain them a little bit, and then I'll show you the results. So excuse me. So you can see here this Tech CG ID DERS Plus. It does if you do all. It scans for all the directories. Okay, so that's one of the main ones you're going to use. It takes a long time. Keep that in mind. Um, and then you're going to see here you can s turn off the outputs so that you can run it in the background, things like that. If you want to see the errors, if you want to see everything that's actually saying. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that you're not seeing. If you want to look at it all in case you um, are interested, you can do that. A verbose output will do that for you. Um, you can see it's good. you can have it check database. Um, you can have it check... Um, evasion you can have it do all kinds of stuff but the one we actually ran today and I'll show it to you down here is the uh, where's that the tuning so we did the I believe it was tuning let me make sure here yep so tuning X so we did tuning and then we added this X reverse tuning so that includes all except for specified so it includes everything unless I specify it not to so basically we just did everything which is why it took so long um, but basically what, what we did is, I'll show you the output here. We ran this on scanmeinmap.org. If you guys have never been to that website, it's a website that InMap allows you to scan, basically. And that's what we ran it on. And you can see it took a little bit, but we've got some interesting information here. So we've got, uh, let's see, just starting from the top, right? So you, automatically you're getting the server and the version number. So that's pretty good. So right off the bat, we're getting good information, okay? And then it's saying here that, uh, let's see, the, the header's not defined. Um, that basically just means that a, a web administrator didn't change the header. It's probably the default one, or um, it's not something specific. So sometimes you can get information from the header, and that's what it's saying. It's saying that it's possible. Um, let's see what else we got. We've got uncommon header, so TCN found with contents list, okay. So it's saying here, the Apache mod negotiation is enabled with multi-views, which allows attackers to easily brute force file names. So what that's basically telling us is that we could sit there and go, you know, inmap or scanme.inmap.org slash, you know, and it, some of them are actually in here, like images, icons, readme. You can just sit there and guess is what it's telling you, and you're going to be able to find those files is what, what it's saying. Um, it's also saying that your typical um, index.html is found. So it's probably the default file structure is what they're saying. So you can, again, guess a lot of the files. So you're getting a lot of information here. Um, allowed HTTP methods. So most HTTP is going to allow you to get, right? Because that's asking for the request to initiate the handshake. So obviously it's going to allow it, but it's just telling you that it's going, these are the commands that it's allowing, okay? Now here's the interesting stuff. The OSVDB, um, you got images, directory, indexing, found. So it actually found this directory, and it found this directory. Now the reason this is an interesting, because that's an Apache default file, that tells you that whoever administrated this website probably didn't do a lot of security. They probably left a lot of defaults, which kind of gives you a heads up on what you're looking at. And then at the same time, what it tells you is you can actually, with these, these are directories. You can actually run that directory command that is up here that we showed you. Where is it at? The CGI DERS. 
and try and scan for directories because you're it's showing it directories are available and it's finding them but this isn't a directory scan so it's doing something a little different but it's finding directories so you might want to run a full directory scan on this and kind of see what you come up with um, the other thing is you're going to see it says here Apache 2.4.7 is outdated that's really important um, pretty much everyone that scans scanme.nmap.org knows it's outdated uh, you can look at the website and see that it's outdated I mean it's a super outdated website but it's important to know because this actually tells you it's outdated, which means it's going to have vulnerabilities and they're going to be sitting somewhere. So um, typically you're not going to see one that's that easy, but it does take a long time. Again, the Nmap, and this is a Kali, or not Kali, a Linux only tool. Um, so this is something that you, you do get default on Kali. It's not something that you have to install or download. If you don't have it, you can obviously app get it. Um, but you can see there's all kinds of in it. You can update the database. So as this tool or as time progresses, there's obviously going to be more vulnerabilities. This tool will, if you update it, will continue to pull those um, from it. So you can see there's a bunch of different things that you can do. It's a very useful tool. And uh, I'll let you guys kind of mess with it. But be careful with this tool. The one thing I can tell you is be very careful with this tool. It is a very loud tool, okay? What I mean by that is every intrusion detection system, every intrusion prevention system is going to catch you using this tool, okay? It's not trying to hide you. It's trying to test all vulnerabilities on that, okay? So keep that in mind. It's more for a uh, white, white box test, not so much for a black box test, okay? So we'll go ahead and minimize that. The next tool I'm going to show you is I'm going to have to show you the results first because you can't. I tried to open multiple accounts of it and it wouldn't let me. So this is called Loftcrack. You can just go to loftcrack.com. It's L zero P H T crack. Okay, and this is a tool that's really good. Um, it's basically a very simplistic version of um, some password cracking tools. If you guys have used any other password cracking tools. This is a very simplistic version, but it also, the nice thing about this one is you don't have to necessarily have the hashes. So this would be, again, a white box test um, type of tool. So if you have an admin account that you can access, so this would be very important if, let's say I walk into your, I'm doing a pen test and your company says, okay, we're gonna give you an admin account, we're gonna give you access to everything and just let you tell us what's wrong. This is a perfect tool for that because using that admin account, you can actually just test against all accounts on the system. Obviously, Tim, John, these I made these up, right? These accounts I made up. One of them I made obviously super easy, password one, two, three. Um, the other ones I made very difficult. The This one uh, is defaulted. I did not make it. Um, again, the admin account on this laptop is defaulted. Um, the default account, guest, etc. these are defaulted. So it did crack them and it's saying no password so it just tested no password good tested no password good tested no password good now john i made his password one two three and it cracked his password in seven seconds so you can see this is super 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 simple it even gives you the user id which is very interesting um and it gives you let's see so last changed and you can see i changed it today so you can see that a lot of these you know pretty easy to tell what's going on right so now you can see it did not crack this it did not crack that now that's not saying that these are not crackable what it's saying is using their basic dictionary in this system it did not crack now anyone that is a password cracker or knows a lot about password cracking understands that this is just going to test for basic stuff for this scan specifically okay and if you're a really good password cracker, you're going to do different techniques, okay, to get into it. Now, let me exit this, and I'll show you guys how to set this up, okay? So we're going to not save it. Now we're going to go ahead and open loft crack. All right, so we just do proceed with trial. Password auditing wizard, okay. Introduction, yep. Windows, yep. Now... This is where it gets interesting, right? You can use a remote machine, okay? So you can do this across a network. 
you just have to have an admin account. So if you have a like an admin account across the entire domain, you can do that, which is awesome. Okay, so this is where you can use specific credentials. So let's say you wanted to, they made you an account specifically for um, pen testing. You can use that. Uh, here I'm using the ones I'm logged in as. Now here's where it gets really interesting, okay? So quick password audit, that's what I did. It just checks for passwords that you can find in the dictionary, common, uh, common like basically edits of that. Uh, you got common password audit. This checks for passwords that you can find in the dictionary and you can see it keeps going. Followed by one hour long brute force attack. So it's just gonna, for an hour, it's just gonna try some things and see if it gets lucky. Uh, thorough, this method, same thing, plus six hours brute force. Now this one, this method starts with a 24 hour long brute force attack. Now keep in mind, it says it starts with that, okay? It's not, say it doesn't even waste its time on the dictionary. Keep that in mind. Then it checks for passwords that it couldn't or that you can find the dictionary. Okay, so you notice that use of GPU enabled machine is required. Okay, so this could take several days to complete. Now the reason that's so important is because if you're trying to use this on a very low end machine such as a Raspberry Pi or something like that, you may want to pull you may not want to use this tool you may want to just pull those hashes get them somewhere else and then try and use this machine okay because you can see here that number one the word list here that's actually not that big of a word list surprisingly okay and then you can see it's going to do some permutations so it's just going to change a couple of things on it but it's not going to be anything crazy it's like the simple rock you dot text right for linux it's not going to be anything insane but with that strong password audit, a 24-hour brute force attack with a good machine, you can really do some some good um, brute force. But at the end of the day, you can brute force something. If it's a good password, you can brute force it for years, and it may never find it. So keep that in mind. Don't think this is an end-all, be-all tool. There's um, a lot more to password cracking, but this is a great auditing tool. This is a great tool to just go, oh, you've got 500 users. Let me run it see if I get anything. If I get 200 that have simple, simple passwords, okay, number one, obviously I can get in their accounts because now I have their password, but number two, you may need to start training your, your guys you know, better. So once you do quick password audit next, now I'm not going to um, start it, but you can see you can create a report. Now that's important because when you go for a pen test, as you guys know, you have to show this stuff, right? You can't just go to a pen or after a pen test and go to someone and say, ah, you guys need better passwords. No, you've got to say, hey, look, the, here's the problem. Here's all the passwords I cracked in a matter of 24 hours, right? Here's something I did. Like, you've got to be able to show that, right? So display passwords when audited. That's pretty uh, common. Uh, but the reason you may want to hide that is like, let's say uh, this was a live machine and there's people around or it's I'm working somewhere where I don't want to be seen as far as I don't think everyone else should be able to see this information you can hide it so it doesn't pop up same thing with hashes you can hide the hashes if you needed to uh, again if you have permission and you're in a closed area like an office or something you'd be fine but keep that in mind guys uh, loft cracks a very good tool what I recommend you doing to mess around with it a little bit is actually going on your computer and creating some accounts and when you create those accounts go through make some easy passwords some medium passwords and some very difficult passwords and run that 24-hour scan and see what it finds see if, you, if it catches all of them if it only catches some see what the complexity is and you, then you'll kind of start to understand a little bit of why the people's websites and people's uh, different systems and stuff require some extreme complex passwords um, and, and you'll kind of get the gist of why, because it's a tool that takes 24 hours can hack some serious passwords. So keep that in mind, guys. Those are the tool, tool, two tools I want to show you today. Um, again, I'm traveling for work, so I know it's a pain in the butt that I have to use this mic and I have to use this webcam and I have to use this background and everything. But it is what it is. I still want to get the videos for you guys and I still want to make it happen. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, once again, like and subscribe.